I'm quite excited about uh, this test ride. I'm really looking forward to test riding both the Interceptor and the Classic 350. But I have to admit the Interceptor 650 is the one I'm most keen to test ride. It's the bike I could see myself buying and if the test ride goes as I ex well as I imagine it might, then I could see myself putting up my NC 750X for sale and buying the Interceptor 650. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see how it goes. Now this particular bike's only done three kilometres so uh, hasn't been run in or anything and the tyres are still as you can see got all the nipples on them so pretty green and the brakes will need to be bedded in so it's going to be uh, a very easy test ride basically I want to see what the bike's like suspension wise what the bike's like comfort wise what the bike's like handling wise and um yeah what's like on the highway now i do want to just say a big thank you to mark and justin and the team at indian motorcycle in ballarat for giving me the opportunity to test ride this bike and the classic 350. Uh, i really appreciate you guys supporting the channel so if you're looking for an indian if you're looking for royal enfield if you're looking for benelli if you're looking for a soco and even segway come and see the guys down here at indian motorcycle in ballarat now this is a bike that I've been wanting to test ride for a little while and as I said earlier it's a bike I could see myself owning so I have expectations of what the bike's going to be like to ride um, so it'll be interesting to see if those expectations match up to reality just sitting on it and picking it up off the stands you know, it feels you know, pretty easy it doesn't feel like a heavy bike to pick up off the stand So again, a little bit of play on the clutch lever there. Yeah, finding neutral is a little bit tricky there. So I like to look at the gauges. It looks quite nice, very simple. Just got your speed up to 200 days an hour revs up to 7000 now i think uh, what i'll do is i'll put the all the specs running along the bottom of the screen but i think peak power is around about 7150 and peak torque around 5000 we'll see how that that plays out Bring those mirrors out further if you want.
here it is, the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. Now I've just got off riding the Classic 350, which you'll be able to find a separate video on, on my channel. Now the Interceptor 650 is parallel twin 650, and I'll run all the specs at the bottom of the screen. This is primarily a ride to see what the bike's like to ride, and really my first experience with Royal Enfields. So, let's start with the ergonomics of the bike. Um, I find this bike to be very comfortable. The riding position is very neutral. There's a little bit of weight on my wrists, uh, but not a lot, but as soon as you get on the, the highway, then you actually would probably feel like you'd like more weight on your wrists, even the bar's a little bit lower. Now, with this particular one, I think the handlebars are um, rotated too far forward. If this was my bike, I'd just loosen them off and, and roll them back a bit towards me, so that this section of the handlebars is in line with the forks. I reckon that'd be pretty well ideal riding position. But I'm quite surprised at how well the bike handles. Uh, it really tips in nicely into turns. It's very stable in turns. You know, you, you feel like you can just drop it in. It'll hold the line nicely and just just take you through to turn up. I'm very surprised and impressed with the handling of this bike. With the suspension on the Classic 350, I found I found the suspension did get a little overwhelmed at times, and you know you could feel you getting to the limit of the suspension. Different story with this bike, the Interceptor 650. I've ridden it on the same roads I rode the Classic 350, and the suspension is really good. Initially, it feels hard or firm, but once you get going, you know it's, it it is compliant over bumps and um, just holds the bike really nicely uh, at speed on the freeway, on the highway. And yeah, I'm super impressed with this bike. Now the seat I too did find a little hard to sit on when I first sat on it. But uh, as I'm riding, it's really, it's really conforming nicely to my butt and is becoming, well, is, is comfortable. Uh, I haven't ridden it for hours, but it is becoming more comfortable the longer I ride it. So I was worried that it was going to be too narrow. And it just sitting on it initially did feel, it does feel a little narrow. But yeah, it is um, becoming more comfortable as I ride. Now, I really like the gauges, nice and clean and simple. Um, you don't get a lot of information. All you get is the fuel capacity, uh, your odometer, and there's a switch here, a button, which switches from trip A, trip B, and back to odometer. So that's all you get. That's, but really, that's all the information you need. As in the case of the Classic 350, there's no gear position indicator. But, you know, I haven't missed it, really. You, you, you just ride as you would uh, in days gone by, where you just go down to the bottom of the gearbox and go up to the top of the gearbox. Speaking of gears, on the freeway at 100 kilometres an hour, uh, this does that speed, no problems at all. But I did notice that in fifth, I didn't realise I was in fifth gear, but at 100, 110 kilometres an hour in fifth gear, I did, was getting a lot of vibrations, uh, high frequency vibes through the pegs. But once I dropped into 6th, all that went away and it was just smooth and uh, quite nice to be on the highway. Power-wise, uh, yeah, this bike has, it's, it's not like, you know, it's not like a, a power monster or, or anything like that or a torque monster, but it certainly has all you need. In fact, it's got a pleasing amount of torque and power is, is the best way to describe it. Sitting in on the highway in top gear and 6th gear, I was doing about four and a half thousand RPM at a hundred and ten kilometres per hour and it was just doing that easy. And when I rolled the throttle on a little bit, by having its horsepower peak at seven thousand RPM, there's still plenty left in it if you need to overtake vehicles and things like that. So so power wise, yeah, I'm I'm very impressed with um, this six fifty CC parallel twin engine. And uh, look at it, it just looks absolutely fantastic. Now this is not my favourite colour scheme. I like the black and red or the white and red. Uh, they're probably my two picks. But y yeah, it's um, it's a very nice looking bike. And I also like the orange too, the orange paint scheme. But with interestingly, with the orange paint scheme, this headlight is chrome, this section, and the rims are alloy rims, and this is alloy in colour too, the hub of the, the wheel. So 
there's a few changes from bike to bike although all the colour schemes have the black rims apart from the orange bike which has uh, alloy rims uh, or alloy coloured rims now the exhaust note on the bike you know you can't really hear much at, at highway speeds but or at freeway speeds but yeah just just when you're around town and things like that it sounds sounds really nice it's very pleasing and surprisingly louder than I was expecting this to sound with stock pipes so um, if this was my bike I would definitely not be changing those pipes they're just perfect as they are for me now I have seen on some channels people removing bits and pieces uh, like this fender extender here and the one on, on the rear um, personally I'd be leaving them on uh, I'd prefer the extra protection and not have them bits and pieces not have the mud sort of flying up at the back of the bike I have seen if you go too far it will end up spitting up onto your back this fuel caps uh, certainly a nice touch it's got, it's got a nice quality feel to it build quality wise there are a couple of things that do feel like it's built to a budget but there's nothing that detracts me from this bike build quality wise there's, there's nothing that would put me off buying uh, the bike at all whatsoever from what I've seen so far the controls are, uh, feel a little bit sort of wobbly and stuff like that but after having used them that's not an issue it wouldn't worry me at all long term the switch gear feel, does feel a little bit cheaper uh, when you're flicking the indicator from left to right and things like that but still functions quite well the mirrors give you a good view of the road behind I do see a little bit of my arm in each of the mirrors but not an issue at all and braking so far has been very good considering that the brakes still need to be bed in they're sort of a little bit a little bit soft to apply at the moment but I can feel them as I'm riding getting stronger and stronger so um, I think they'll be very good I did see someone talking about the kickstand it's got a very short kickstand and the bike does lean over a fair way when it's on the side stand so uh, that's interesting so you'd have to be careful there where you park the bike I actually like the look of these shocks I have heard some people complaining about the anodized gold anodized bits on them but I don't mind that at all and having that reservoir is better for a shock when it's doing a lot of work bumping up and down it just keeps the oil a little bit cooler and the shock performs better so like I said I've been quite surprised by the suspension how good it is and it's something that I wouldn't feel I would need to change now the Enfields do have a little different way of doing their servicing they, they're sort of a bit more frequently serviced than other models and for the first service you actually have to check your valve clearances but they are that um, the nut shims they're the little nut adjusters on top of the lifters is how they're adjusted so that should be a lot simpler than doing shims I've done shims in the past and that's certainly a lot more work so just something to keep in mind I think the service intervals are more frequent on these bikes but having said that they're nice and simple and um, there's no reason why I I couldn't service this bike myself from what I can see here these uh, braided oil lines are a nice little touch just notice those and the oil filter is nice and easy to get to as I said build quality looks quite alright there's nothing here that would put me off buying this motorcycle I do like this fork brace that comes standard on the bike that could be a big part of why it feels so good and so stable now I have read that the fork angle is about 24 degrees or somewhere around there so that could help explain why I feel it does turn in pretty quickly when you turn into a turn it took me by surprise actually the first time I, I took a bend and turned in would I buy this bike for myself um, yes I would would I buy the classic 350 uh, for me personally no it's not it's not the sort of bike that would suit the sort of riding I do I do like having all the extra power and and torque that this bike has um, it's just so much more effortless everywhere really the classic 350 is a, a very nice bike and, and I do still do find it very appealing but for for me the interceptor 650 really um, I think has my name on it it's really really suited to the sort of riding I like to do okay now it's time to bring this video to a conclusion at the start of the video I said that if the Interceptor 650 was as an engaging bike as I imagined it might be to ride I would consider buying that bike well after riding the bike um, I certainly was impressed with the bike and I do like the Interceptor 650 but I thought the real test will be jumping back on my NC750X 
and just comparing how those two bikes stack up to each other because I would have to sell the NC750X to buy the Interceptor 650. Immediately after getting off the Interceptor 650, I thought the NC750X might feel a little bit more premium to ride or a little, um, just have a more of a quality feel to it. But getting back on the NC750X and riding at home, I couldn't say that it was a much better bike to ride than the Interceptor 650, nor could I say the Interceptor 650 was a much better bike to ride than the NC750X. Obviously they're two very different bikes, but I didn't come away feeling that the Interceptor 650 was a bike that I had to buy. And in the days since test riding the Interceptor 650 and riding my NC750X again, I'm not in a place where I feel I have to sell my NC750X to buy the Interceptor 650. Now is the Interceptor 650 a good bike? Yeah, I, I believe it really is, and I, I find it to be a very attractive bike, but my NC750X is also that sort of bike. I, I really like the bike and I, I like riding it, and um, uh, I really appreciate it. And there's a few features of the NC750X that I like more than the Interceptor, and there's a few features of the Interceptor 650 that I like more than the NC750X. Now I feel long term the NC750X is going to be a more uh, long lasting bike, you know, have more longevity than the Interceptor 650. That's just a gut feeling I get, Honda versus Royal Enfield. I might be completely wrong there, but I also like the longer service intervals of the NC750X. In fact, I've made a bit of a list of the pros and cons of the Interceptor 650, also comparing it to the Triumph Speed Twin 900 because uh, if you're looking at the Interceptor 650, I think you really should look at the Triumph Speed Twin 900 as well. Now the pros for the Interceptor 650 are A, it's available for test rides and in stock. The Triumph Speed Twin 900 in Australia, uh, really in my area, I can only test ride it if I want to buy the bike basically. If I'm keen on the bike and want to buy it, then they'll let me have a test ride to seal the deal. Uh, otherwise, no test rides are available. In fact, there's only three Speed Twin 900s in the country. So in that area, the Interceptor 650 is a real standout in that it's A, available for test rides, and there's plenty of stock um, on the floor at my local dealer. Another big pro for the Interceptor 650 is the cheaper starting price at 10,990 Australian dollars right away versus 16,390 Australian dollars for the Speed Twin 900. That's over $5,000 more expensive than the Interceptor 650. Styling wise, I prefer the looks of the Interceptor 650 over the Speed Twin 900. To me, it's a better looking bike. I just find it more appealing. The engine performance of the Interceptor 650, I really like. It's a really nice blend of torque and horsepower. It has really nice handling. I was very impressed with the handling of the Interceptor 650 and I found the suspension to be really good and, and offered a really nice ride. Now for the cons for the Interceptor 650, service intervals. Uh, the service intervals are pretty high really. Looking at the maintenance schedule, uh, the exhaust valve clearances have to be inspected and adjusted every 5,000 kilometres. So even for the first service after you've just done 500 kilometres or 300 miles, you have to have the valve clearances inspected. Now I know the Triumph's valve clearances will be much greater, uh, inspection intervals will be much greater than that. So that's a real turn off for me because, uh, okay, you can say, all right, well, you can just do it yourself and, and do the valve clearance inspections yourself, which you can, because they are this just a nut adjuster system, um, which is the same on the NC750X, by the way. So they're nice and easy to do, but really, they're saying here that you need to do it every every 5,000 kilometres or every six months. You need to inspect the valve clearances on the Interceptor 650. Would it stop me from buying a bike if I really wanted it? No, but it's something that you've got to keep in the back of your mind. You're either going to have to pay for that or do it yourself. And the other con I had for the Interceptor 650, there's only two really, it's possibly not as comfortable out of the box as the Speed Twin 900 from what I'm hearing. For me personally, if I bought the Interceptor 650, there's two things I'd be doing. One is I'd be trying to find the most comfortable seat I could for the bike. And two, uh, the handlebars. I think the handlebars are a little too high on the Interceptor 650. I did try the Continental GT, um, but I didn't like the angle of those handlebars. It just put my wrist in an awkward position. 
So for me, I'd buy a seat for the Interceptor 650, and I'd also be a little bit cheeky and probably buy the handlebars from the Speed Twin 900 and fit them on the Interceptor 650. I think that would be a really, would set the bike up really nicely riding position for me. Now for the pros for the Triumph Speed Twin 900, bigger engine, more torque, which I, I always like, uh, longer service intervals, uh, 16,000 kilometres uh, between services, proven longevity. I've owned a couple of Triumphs and found them to be really good and re really reliable. And for me, uh, Royal Enfield's still a bit of a question um, in my mind. Alloy wheels, although I find spoke wheels to be more appealing, uh, in reality, day-to-day -day use, I do prefer alloy wheels. Just easy to clean, easier to look after. And so for me, that's a pro on the Triumph Speed Twin. Better handlebar position, as, as I've uh, said already and uh, great performance and handling from the reviews I've been seeing on the Speed Twin as well. Now cons for the Speed Twin is limited stock in Australia, only available for a test ride if you plan to buy one. So that's a, that's a big con because I'm not going to buy a bike that I can't test ride anymore. I really need to test ride the bike before I even think about buying it. Another con for the Triumph is it's a lot more expensive than the Interceptor 650 and not as visually appealing as the Interceptor 650. Now I shouldn't put that as a con because I still, still do find the bike to be very attractive. Uh, I just find the Interceptor 650 to be more attractive. It's just more classic in its styling. So after all that, am I going to be buying an Interceptor 650? I'm going to have to say no to that at this stage. I, I do keep going backwards and forwards in my mind because some, t some days I would like to have the bike, some days I would think, well, maybe a Triumph Speed Twin 900 would suit me better, and then other days I think, you know what, I'm perfectly happy with my NC750X, apart from the seat, which I find to be very uncomfortable. Actually, I will do a long-term review on the NC750X. It's done about 10,000 kilometres now, so I think I'll have to pen that video in, and I might even do that as the next video. Okay, well there you have it. That was my test ride of the Interceptor 650 from Royal Enfield. Overall, I really like the bike. Uh, I think it's a, it's a bike I could recommend uh, as long as you're aware of the service intervals. That's the big, the big one. And if you're prepared to perhaps do your own servicing or quite happy to pay to have the servicing done, then um, yeah, it's a bit of a no-brainer to give a try and have it. Just, just have a go at it. I would definitely recommend taking one for a test ride. Uh, I think you'd be pretty impressed with the way the bike rides and uh, performs. For a 650, it does, does ride very well. Okay, well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my test ride of the Interceptor 650 from Royal Enfield. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye for now.